Welcome back to part two of the bubble bucket. And I'm glad you're back. That means we did something right the first time and you're interested in hydroponics. That's how it goes with hydroponics. If you're into it, then get into it. And um, the bubble bucket, which I didn't touch on last time, is actually scientifically called deep water culture. Um, that's when your plants roots are hanging in bubbling water with nutrient in it. Um, this technique is very simple. It's one of the easiest ways to get into hydroponics. Um, you can do a lot with it. You just need to have oxygen in your water because the roots need oxygen. And um, there's a lot of pros and cons to different hydroponic systems. This one doesn't use any kind of circulation pump. It's just an air pump, so not much can go wrong with it. Um, one problem we do have with deep water culture is in the summer months when it gets hot, since your roots are in the water, it can be hot and then you can have pythium and problems with bacteria and that's one of the downfalls to it. Um, other kind of systems like ebb and flows don't have the roots sitting in water all day long. So when you're picking out a hydroponic system, you might want to keep that in mind or at least come in and talk to us about it. Um, over the winter time, this is a great system. And depending where you're at in your house, you can use it if you're in a cool basement, you know, you ain't gonna have any problems in the summer. Um, and today's episode, what we're gonna be doing is adding this cool little thing here. It's a water indicator line. It's a piece of blue tubing. You can see through it and wherever your water level is in here, you'll be able to walk in your room and tell right away. Um, it comes in handy instead of having to take your lid off because once your plant's growing, it's gonna be harder and harder to get your lid off. So having this helps. And we're gonna show you how to do that. And meet us over at the parts section and we're over at the parts now, and there's a couple of different ways you can do this. Um, we have the old grommets. You're gonna have a half inch grommet in the bottom of your bucket, and then you're gonna have a half inch elbow, and then that would ride up the side. Um, I'm not a big fan of grommets. I found that in grow rooms especially, even outdoors especially, they get, over time they just get hard and start leaking. I like using these down here. This is a, called a drain fitting. Um, we have multiple sizes here. Half inch, three quarter, and one inch. Um, we use this for a lot of different stuff in here. You can build all kinds of stuff with these. They're much more watertight. Um, they come with two rubber grommets. So that's what's gonna be coming out of the bucket. Then we're gonna have our elbow, and then that's gonna ride up the side. So to do all that, we're gonna need our blue tubing. Um, we use blue tubing because the light can go through it and the blue actually filters out the spectrum that will cause the allergy. So this is safe to use. And you'll notice in the hydroponics industry, there's a lot of stuff that's blue. So that is why stuff is blue. Um, this is a little loose piece here. We'll cut it down when we get over to the bucket. Um, now, on the top of the bucket, there's a little cool little ring here that holds your tube on so it just doesn't fall over. And we saw them, they're cheap. So that'll be up top and that'll kind of keep it up and then you can pull it out and do whatever you gotta do. So those are different ways to do it. Um, and that's really the only parts we need so I'll meet you back over at the counter. All right, back over here, um, we got our little things that we brought over, we've got our tubing. Um, next thing we're gonna talk about is our bits. This project, uses a one and, I believe it's one and one eighth. Could be one and a half, so we're gonna make sure here. One and a quarter. So that is the kind of bit we're gonna be using for that. Um, they also have paddle bits out there, but we find that tears the plastic up, so I don't know what this is actually called, but um, this is another style that we've used before. This one's a little bit trickier. If you are trying to get a precise hole size and you go one too far, you're done. This is good. That's what I use when I do my grommets. But today we're going to use this one. Um, the tubing, how long to cut it. We're actually going to go up towards the top of the bucket, even though the water's never going to be up that high. We want to have it up there so the water doesn't come out and just keeps it out of the way. And as for the drilling of the hole, it doesn't actually have to be at the very bottom of the bucket because your water lever is never going to be down that far. So, let's see, I got my good drill today. So, we're going to pick uh, any 
side is good. I mean, if your air is going in one side and you want your water level on that same side, you could do it that way. But it really doesn't matter. I'm going to kind of go off a little bit to the side of the air. does make a little bit of a mess so and we're going to use our deep burring tool which we talked about in the last episode this one you can bore it out a little bit it's not going to hurt because you have a lot of wiggle room here so i clean that up real nice you want to leave uh, one rubber grommet on the inside and one on the out. The outer rubber grommet really isn't necessary, but we're going to use it because it comes with it. So These also bend the five-gallon buckets back to flat real nice. So Put that in from the inside. Hand tighten these. Um, if you over tighten them, it squishes the grommet out and then they leak. Um, this shouldn't be this should be fine like this all right now you're tubing to put the elbow on we're gonna cut a piece about that big to put in between so i'm just gonna kind of eye it up here right about there and this will connect them together Doing things this way will make it last longer. It takes up a little bit more room than having the grommet way to do it, but it's just something you ain't gonna have to worry about the leaking. So, like I said before, the water level is probably gonna ever be up about this high, but we're gonna put it up here anyway so we can get our little clamp on there easier. All right, now to, now to apply this little doohickey here, the quarter inch bit. Without it, this, this line would just kind of be falling all over the place, so. You can put it different places on here. Um, I've found that if you can hit this outer lip, that's great, just don't go all the way through it. You wanna go through the first section, but not through the whole bucket. So we're gonna drill and just kind of be careful when we're drilling. Right when I went through, I stopped. And then that pretty much clips right in here, like that. You can run your blue hose up through it. And now you have a water le level indicator for your bucket. Um, you can also get fancy and put like a valve down here so you can drain your bucket easier. I find a lot of my customers tend to do this when they go to drain. Move the tube off to the side and let it drain out. That also works. So now when you walk in your room, you'll be able to tell where the water level is. And that wraps it up for this portion. Our next episode, we're going to be talking about having two or, two or more buckets together. And everything will be the same water level. And we're even going to add a little bit of circulation to it. So that all your buckets stay stirred up better. And check on back for that. And again, I'm Gary from PA Hydroponics. And we're York Springs, PA. And we also have a store in Maryland called All Good Garden Supply in Finksburg. Have a good